Hello, my name is Sally and I have my lovely model June with me today um, and I'm going to do a full makeover on June but I'm going to sort of really um, take a little bit of time to address a concern that June has which is um, as we get older a lot of us find that our lips become a little bit thinner. Um, so when we get to lips I'm going to spend a bit of time telling you and showing June and yourselves how you can actually make your lips look a little bit plumper without looking unnatural. So as I said, as we get older, it's really common to find that the lips have become thinner. We produce less collagen and the muscles about around the lip area are not as strong as they were. Um, there are certain things you can do. One of them, of course, is to just draw attention away from the lips um, by wearing beautiful earrings. Lovely earrings on today, June. Um, really beautiful eye makeup, lovely um, blusher and hair, everything else. Um, so that's one thing you can do. The other thing is that's really important is to keep your lips in tip-top condition because if you've got dry lips then that will accentuate the thinness. If your lips are slightly more hydrated that makes a massive difference. Um, so I'm a great believer in either using um, a little baby toothbrush a soft dry toothbrush with some lip balm mm -hmm. and just taking away any sort of dryness and any flaky skin at night time and then putting more balm on that really works well or you can make your own little um, scrub for your lips with like a teaspoon of soft brown of brown sugar teaspoon of olive oil and just massage in uh, and then rinse off and that will take away all the dead skin cells and then you can put some lip balm on at night and that will really also hydrate and that will make a, a big difference and the way your lips look. So the first product that I'm going to use on June is a Smooth Like Silk Face Prime. Um, and I'm going to put a couple of pumps on my hand and you can just apply this product with your fingers all over the face. So we have made sure that June's face is cleansed and moisturised. But what I always do is say wait a few minutes after you've put your moisturiser on before you move on to the Smooth Light like Silk Face Prime. Just let your moisturiser sink in and do its job. So the Face Prime is actually a, it's a makeup item, it's not a skincare item, but it's see-through, it's colourless, and it does exactly as it says on the bottle. It just means that your skin will feel really smooth. It fills in any fine lines, any open pores, so that your foundation works really really well and it means that your makeup will last all day and it's amazing when you put it on you feel your skin it does actually feel like silk doesn't it mm. it's amazing i love this product if you've got fine lines around your mouth i always do put make sure i put some face prime just on this area as well although i will be using never feather lip prime specifically so that the lipstick doesn't bleed, but just make sure you do use your primer there too. Okay, so I'm going to use on June um, the beautiful Continuous Cover Foundation number two. Um, June has a beautiful complexion, so I am going to also give her one little squirt of Light Look Beauty Balm 0.5 as it's summertime, just to lighten the whole look of the foundation. In the winter, she can just wear this. Um, in the summer, I think a little bit of Light Look Beauty Balm will be really good. And I like to also mix in a little tiny squirt of face prime with all with these two so that it really works together to get a customised base for you. Okay, all three together. And do is take my foundation brush number three and just sort of mix them together <laughs> with my hand. See, I'm holding the foundation brush really actually at the bristles, so I'm in control of it. So I'm working it in with the brush. Just open your eyes, Connell. I put a tiny bit just under the eyes, just a little bit. I'm going to put some concealer under June's eyes as well. But and what I'm now going to do is to take a clean foundation brush. So if you haven't got two, then you can just use your fingers but I have got a second one. I like to just buff in with the clean one so I'm not putting more product on. I'm just really blending it really well. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm now going to use um, the beautiful creamy cover-to-cover -cover concealer um, in the shade O2 because we've used O2 in the foundation. Um, and this is a great product. Because it's creamy, you could just use it in areas where you need that little bit of extra help. If you wear glasses, you sometimes find that there's a little bit of an indentation mm. that happens. So I tend to put a little bit extra concealer just in there just to help. And then we'll put some powder on that too. And then what I do is just check whether there's any little areas that need concealing. June has actually got beautiful skin, so it's not very many. So just the occasional little sunspot. You can just use a little bit of extra concealer there. So I've now created the canvas on which we're going to paint the picture. So I'm going to set that now with the beautiful translucent powder. Um, so it's clear, it's not going to add any colour, but what it will do is hold June's makeup on really well. The face prime will hold it on, this is like the double security of keeping your makeup fresh and lasting all day without setting in fine lines. If you've got thin lips and lines around your lips, you do not want to put a heavy powder around that area that will just sit in the line. So this is so fine that it will not do that. Um, so I'm now going to use Smooth Out Eye Prime on June. Um, this is a fantastic product to use before you put eyeshadow on because it will mean your eyeshadow will not move and it will just cover any, you might have fine veins um, on your eyelid as we get older our eyes become a little bit thinner. So it means that the eyeshadow will go on as a true colour and it will not crease. You don't need very much and the product goes on beautifully when the eyes are dry and oil free. Make sure you do blend it well when you put it on, don't just blob it on. Blend it across either with a clean finger or with the concealer brush. So what we're going to use today on June, um, from this lovely soft purple trio, I am going to use Lilac um, all over as a base. This is a really pretty gentle colour. Make sure when you're putting your base colour on that you put enough colour on so that it doesn't look patchy. If you've got no eyebrows at all, what I would say is to do your brows first. So I'm now going to use Pewter Grey, which is the middle colour, just in June's socket line and just above, just to give a little bit of more definition in this area here. And I'm doing it in a sort of windscreen wiper motion. I'm doing it just above the socket line, just to give the illusions of a slightly higher socket line. As we get older, everything drops a little bit, so it's just quite a clever way of just lifting an eye up slightly. So the pewter, although it's called pewter grey, it has got some really lovely sort of purpley lilac -y undertones to it so that's why it goes it's not really a true grey and it's really pretty to use over the light lilac. I'm just going to blend that now using the blender brush out to in. Really lovely soft brush. I'm now going to define June's eyes. Now, because I want a slightly stronger look, just to detract away from lips, I'm going to use charcoal, which is a slightly darker colour. Um, and you can also use this if you want a smoky grey look. It's a really lovely colour. So charcoal grey. And I'm going to use my wedge brush number eight. And I've taken a little bit of colour up and I'm going to just tap off the excess on my hand. Starting at the outside and I'm just pressing the charcoal into the base of June's lashes. Juna has got beautiful lashes but they're quite fair at the tips as well so mascara is going to make a big difference as it does with me. So what I'm going to do now is to put some mascara onto June's beautiful lashes that we have just curled. Um, made a massive difference using the eyelash curler because she's got, as I said, quite fair lashes, but they're long. Um, so we're using Live Lash Mascara Black Waterproof. 
Um, June wears glasses, so she says also that it's quite helpful to curl her lashes because then the lashes don't actually touch her glasses. And you'll also find if you use the waterproof mascara, that doesn't sort of come off onto your glasses too. So top tip if you find that your mascara blobs is to when you're doing the top lashes, hold a mirror down so that you're like I'm asking June to look down slightly. It means that she's less likely to transfer mascara onto her eyelid. Make sure if you can, you kind of get right to the base and also right to the tips of your lashes, particularly the outer edge lashes, which will just make your eyes look really lovely and big and almond shaped. So I'm now going to use Instant Bright Highlight just underneath June's brows before we do her bring back brow, just to create a little bit of light just under in a sort of half moon shape. So I'm going to use the bring back brow shape in blonde. So you're just putting little tiny feathery strokes into any areas where there might be gaps. I know with me on one side, I tend to sleep on one side, and that side I've kind of slept away and taken the edges off, off my eyebrow. So really good if you can sleep on your back. On a silk pillow, even better. So really important to frame a face. Eyebrows make such a difference to the overall effect of your makeup. So if you haven't tried the product, it's really worth giving it a go. It's not difficult. It's just like painting in little hairs that you might have lost. Okay, so now I'm going to be um, working on June's particular dilemma that she's come to us with um, of slightly thinner lips. So the first product I'm going to use is the really brilliant Never Feather Lip Prime. This product is fantastic for stopping lipstick bleeding. Um, as we get older, as we get more lines around our lips, it's very easy for lipstick to migrate once you put it on. Um, so this product will stop that. The secret to using it is to use it on the outer edge of the lips um, rather than on the lips itself. So I am going to go just above June's lips, following all the way around. kind of like a magic product this it's wonderful so the secret is to put enough on and to let it dry before you actually apply your lipstick so do it just before the lipstick process I'm going a fraction higher because I'm going to just build up very very slightly so next we're going to put some blusher on June to give her a little bit of colour and the blusher colour I'm using is Desert Rose. This is quite a new shade for Look Fabulous Forever and it's absolutely beautiful. It suits both warm and cool colouring. Um, if you're a fan of peach cream but want just a little bit more pigment, this is really lovely and worth trying. So I am going to take a little bit on my finger sure you don't go too low with your blusher because as we get older everything drops so we want to keep the blusher a little bit higher than, than you might naturally want to go and then I take my blusher brush and I say this is I'm always this is the only thing in my life I'm in control of is my blusher brush just give it a gentle blend sort of upwards and outwards. Like I held the foundation brush, I like to hold my blusher brush actually at the bristles so I'm in control of it so that I can really sweep it on very naturally. So I'm going to use just a little bit of the Summer Bronze on June just to just give her a little bit of extra warmth where she would naturally catch the sun. It's a really gentle colour bit under here, a little bit just on her jawline. Okay, so focusing now again on lips. If you've got thin lips, what I would suggest is you do not go for a really dark, really dull lipstick. Um, keep the lip colour 
sort of mid-tone colour or very slightly lighter and it can have a little bit of brightness to it. Um, you don't want anything too, as I said, definitely not dark, definitely not really dull. So I have chosen for June um, Soft Coral. You can see it's a really pretty colour. It's not too dark, not too light, but it's got a little bit of brightness in. It's also really good for neutrals, so it goes with cooler or warmer colourings. It's just an all-round good lipstick to use. So really important to apply with the lip brush number five. Now you can, with slightly thinner lips, very slightly build up. So I would suggest if you're going to try that, not to use the long lasting lipstick until you've perfected your um, application procedure. So I'm going to try today using the non, this is non long lasting, just to show you how it works. So I'm using my lip brush number five, and so therefore you can build up very slightly over the cupid's bow if you want to. So what I'm going to do is start in the middle, and I am just going to outline June's lips. And so I'm using a liner, but I'm using the lipstick as a liner to start with. And then once I've outlined, I fill it in. And this is where using the brush, you can be so much more precise than just applying it with a bullet. When I'm in a hurry, I do just put it on with my bullet, but if I want it to look really professional and to create a really nice shape, then I always make sure I do use my lip brush. It's definitely worth it. If you have applied, if you've got dry lips, as I said earlier, put some lip balm on at the beginning before you put your makeup on. Leave it on until this point and then wipe off the excess before you start the lipstick application process. So a top tip to keep your lipstick on, particularly if you're not wearing one of the long lasting lipsticks, is to take a tissue, when you put one layer of lipstick on, split it so you've got the thinnest layer of tissue, hold it over your lips. I might just ask June just to hold that for me, okay? And I'm taking a little bit of the loose the, the, the translucent powder and powdering through my very thin tissue. So this, I'm now going to take the tissue away gently, you see it's come off a little bit, and I'm just going to literally put a tiny bit directly on, and then I'm going to put a second layer of lipstick on. If you have perfected exactly the shape that you want, and you're using a long lasting lipstick, you don't necessarily have to do that at that stage, but if you haven't got the shade that you love in long lasting, it's definitely worth trying. Another top tip, if you've got thinner lips, is to use a little bit of gloss, either a clear gloss or a slightly lighter gloss, in just the middle area of the lips, which will draw attention to that area, which is already the thickest area, particularly at the bottom. So I'm going to use clear, um, gorgeous gloss lip shining clear on June today. I'm just going to put it in the middle rather than all over. It also creates a little bit of extra texture, which will have the illusion therefore of just making the lips look a little bit thicker and very glamorous too. So final top tip is to use a little bit of the Instant Bright Highlighter, which we used earlier, just on the Cupid's bow. So I'm actually applying it with a very small lip brush again, number five. Just here and here. So we've come to the end of the makeover now, and I'm going to take June's hair clip out. Um, it always looks better when we've got our hair sorted. So we have now finished with June. I just wanted to recap um, with regard to June's dilemma of slightly thinner lips. 
Most important thing is to keep your lips in really good hydrated condition. If your lips are dry and flaky, that will actually make them look thinner. So if you can try and either use a lip scrub or a soft toothbrush um, after putting on lip balm just to take off the dry skin um, and then put more lip balm on or just a flannel will also work um, or you can make sure also that you are drinking enough it's always really important to keep hydrated because if you are dehydrated that will also show in your lips really important to use the never feather lip primer um, before you put your lipstick on and that will stop the lipstick from migrating I would suggest using a mid-tone, not too dark and not too dull lipstick on thinner lips. So keep it a little bit mid-depth mid to, um, mid to slightly lighter in colour. And use your lip brush, number five, to outline. If you use a lip pencil, then use a lip pencil at that stage to make sure that you have outlined your lips and fill it in all over. Now obviously you can use a lip liner to do that and if you are, then fill it in. If you're going to use a lip liner, fill the whole lip area in. Um, you can very slightly go above the cupid's bow and if you're using a lip liner, top tip is to use a very slightly darker colour just in the middle third of your bottom lip and that will also make your lips look a little bit thicker. Um, finally, make sure that you use a light gloss in the centre of your lips, particularly at the bottom where the lips are the thickest, because that will draw the attention and the light to that area of your lips, which will make your lips appear to be thicker. Um, final tip was to use a tiny bit of Instant Bright Highlight on your Cupid's bow, which again brings that forward has to be a tiny amount or you will look as though you've had a frothy cappuccino um, but works really really well to just bring and highlight the top of your lip and make them look thicker so thank you for being an amazing model thank you sally it's lovely thank, thank you, you.